It's funny, you can spend your whole life thinking you're immune to outside thoughts and influences to your life, and suddenly one little blue robot comes up and tells you all about a tiny little succulent plant, and suddenly it's off to the garden center at my closest hardware store, and I'm trying to decide if the startup cost of 15 bucks is in my budget. Welcome back to another video game review here on Mummified Games. Today we're going to be talking about a modern point and click mystery game, 2064 Read Only Memories by Midboss. This game has a lot of charm to it. I love how this game presents itself. The music, art, story, and voice work is all great and do a really good job of pulling me in. I did not want to stop playing. This was the first time in one of these reviews where I was like, okay, maybe I play for two hours and then write the review. But sadly, there was no way I could do that if I wanted to make my deadline. I say that while this is being recorded on Tuesday, when Monday of yesterday, I didn't actually make that deadline. Hmm, funny. The game is set in a future cyberpunk scene where humans have found their way to cybernetically and biologically augment their bodies. Sort of just like every other cyberpunk scenario. Just sort of par for the course at this point. Wouldn't have it any other way. But what's great about this game is it's not overly burdened with the constant narrative of life sucks and there's inequality and class disparity. It's not dystopian cyberpunk, it's more optimistic. People seem to be really jamming with the future that they find themselves in, for the most part. So it's your standard affair. People are making so many augmentations to themselves in so many different ways that there's now a rebel group that is coming up that wants to see humanity return to who they were. Not like a full-blown God's perfect image sort of thing. It's not a religious thing, but still embracing tradition and what makes humans humans. I don't know. If we have the science to make snake people, then I'm all for it. Ooh la la. There are robots that this big company is making that are designed to walk like the humans, talk like the humans, but it's all just fancy code from what they're saying. And then the game tells you about one scientist that's working on transcending that limitation of just fancy code and making something new. Story intro out of the way, the scene opens with your less than standout apartment and you learn that you play as a journalist. And after you go through a sort of nothing of a tutorial, as in, it's like, it's not even there because it's so basic. You write a report and then you go to bed. Inciting action! In the middle of the night, a little blue robot hacks your door and breaks into your apartment, interfaces with your computer, cleans your apartment, and also tries to clean the old computer, breaking in in the process. You wake up and they tell you that they've selected you out of all known contacts of their master to help them track their master down. He was captured last night and you need to join the robot to track down their master or better word for it, creator. The robot's name is Turing, probably named after the real person, Alan Turing, the computer scientist. A note about the dialogue and interactions with Turing, all their lines are voiced. This game gives you so much during the process. There's a lot of reading that you're going to be doing in this game, and luckily, it's not all put on you. I don't want you to think that I don't like reading or I think reading is hard, but if I'm meant to put multiple hours into a game, doing nothing but reading for the entirety of it can get a bit tiring. So I'm glad that so much of it is fully voiced, giving you the chance to look down and tweet your love for this game for a second. And if there's a name or something that comes up, you instantly know how it's meant to be pronounced instead of you waiting until it's said out loud in like a video game review. And then suddenly everyone thinks, wait, Tony, you say it like that? Wow, okay. Look, I have yet to hear anybody actually talk about itch in a casual conversation, so I have no idea if you need to add the .io to the end of it, or if I sound like a boomer who says out loud .com at the end of every website name. Yeah, I just look it up on google.com. I'm trying here, folks, I really am. So after Turing tells you about what they need, you join them on their mission to track down their creator and figure out what's at the bottom of this whole thing. A note about the profile creation scene, it's quite funny, and I thought it was super cool how they include multiple ways of setting up your character. There's nothing visual, so you can't change what your character looks like, but Turing asks you for your name, you just type it out, and I was excited for maybe a robot voice that was going to try to pronounce mummified, but it didn't do it, so oh well. It asks you for your pronouns. Yes, I love it. I would expect nothing less from a developer like Midboss, the people who host the Steam Summer of Pride sale for the last couple of years, highlighting queer games. But the fact that they don't just limit it to he, her, they, but also Zer 
here and another one that slips my mind right now. And also an option for you to enter in your own preferred pronouns. So cool. And then I was ready to answer maybe one more silly question. That's where I was thinking the game would take things, assuming based on its sense of humor and the jokes that would come up in this game. But no, it was a real question about dietary needs and restrictions, something that they wanted to keep in mind when they were talking about food and other things like that. Holy crap, that's so cool. So the game gives you actually options. Omnivore, vegetarian, vegan, halal, gluten-free, dairy-free. What a super cool thing to include in your game. This adds to the inclusion that is offered to so many players of different ways of life. So I just hunted down the list of food options that I was able to replay on the recording I took of this game, just to remind myself, and I'm remembering just how funny this game is. There are great jokes in this. There are subtle allegories to our own real world things in this game. Turing says that at one point they found a better door with a better encryption process online, and they said that there was over 300 reviews on Congo. Wait, Congo? Ha! <laughs> okay, that one actually did get me. Because, you know, Congo the river and the Amazon River. Oh well, I, I thought it was funny. Also, there's a joke about the creator having a list of different things on the TV that they were watching, like Ted's Tech Tips. That one actually got me as well, because it might not be a thing, but I'd like to think that it's a nod to Linus Tech Tips. This game is filled with great, cute jokes. There are a couple of options the game gives you when you wake up to see a strange bot is in your room. Some of the reactions are more fearful, and while reading them as an option, I thought to myself, why? This little friend is cute as hell. There's no way I'd be scared of them. Their cute faces and little arms, I love them so much. The story is sound and the writing in it is so well done. The voice acting is great as well. Turing sounds innocent and has a cute childish nature to them, but they're not dumb at all. They're the most advanced AI program in the world. The gameplay is also stellar. Most of the interactions with things in this world are done with four different options. Look, the game will give you a description of what the item, thing, person, or whatever is. Talk, if it's a person, you can talk to them. Or sometimes things will have voice commands. Take slash touch. You might be able to pick up something or turn it on. Computers will take you to another window where you can do other things inside of it. Use item on. At the start of the game, you're given an ID card and you also pick up a pair of headphones in your apartment. The ID could be used to get you into places or be scanned for whatever might come up. Or you can connect your headphones to random things to hear stuff. What's funny is that you can use your headphones on almost anything and you can get some description of what you hear on all these unique different items. Real basic stuff. Like it's described, it's a point and click mystery game. A lot of the game is being given a scene and you can talk to people in it or interact with the other static items on screen. Everything in this game flows so well together. Nothing takes you out of the experience. It's a story that takes you in and doesn't let go. I think this is a game that I can fully recommend to people no matter what. If you have it, if you were curious about it, or if you've never heard of it, I highly recommend everybody to go check this game out. If you have this game, tell me what your thoughts on it were. Do you think Jesse was a jerk or is she justified in her standoffness in her attitude? If you haven't played this game, are there any other point and click cyberpunk kidnapping mystery games in the racial justice bundle that you think I should check out? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, ah, gee folks, I'm really thinking hard about that Jade plan. I'd love to get one, but my cable bill is coming up and I need to take care of that first. Oh well, maybe next month. You all do the YouTube dance. Like, sub, bell, comment, and share the video with someone you know. And as always, hackers, keep digging, and we'll make it out sometime. See you in the next one.